Detectives have it so rough, bro. When horribly traumatic events take place, it's up to detectives to comb through the gnarliest crime scenes, deliver the toughest news to victims' family members, and deal with some of society's most twisted individuals, all while keeping a professional demeanor and not getting pulled into the emotional pitfalls us normies would fall into. Which makes fictional depictions of their jobs so appealing for movies, books, and of course, video games. After six Yakuza games, series director Toshihiro Nagoshi wanted to tell a new kind of story, and what could be further from a Yakuza game than a detective game? Well, when I played the first Judgment game back in 2018, I felt that Ryu Ga Gotoku Studios, or RGG Studios for short, didn't stray far enough from the Yakuza formula. What we had instead of a detective game, in my opinion, was a Yakuza game dressed in a detective game's uniform. And while I love me a Yakuza game, maybe a little too much, I've actually platinumed almost every one of them, I wanted more detective stuff. Other than picking locks and tailing people occasionally, you were spending the majority of your time mopping the floor with waves of bad guys, just like you did in the Yakuza games. The main narrative wasn't bad at all, but the reason I'm saying all of this up front is because I just finished Lost Judgment, the second adventure in RGG's new detective series. And I am of the mind that Lost Judgment is such an improvement to Judgment, the first game, that if you've ever been curious about why there are so many Yakuza games, or are just always down for a good detective game, then you need to play Lost Judgment. My name's Poopro420, and I'm here to do my very best to objectively explain to you why Lost Judgment is worth your time, especially if you missed out on the first one. For anyone who is not familiar with RGG Studios' work, they're a game studio owned by Sega. They work almost exclusively on the Yakuza series, a popular game where you take on the role of Yakuza frontman Kazuma Kiryu in a fictional Japanese city called Kamurocho. Since 2005, the Yakuza games have been known for smaller, more detailed open worlds than the other games in the genre offered, while showcasing a fantastic narrative with top-of-the-line graphics, at least for their time. It's a rough look. Being that the open world was so detailed, Kamurocho itself doesn't change much between each game, and in fact, it served the series as a static backdrop, getting only minor changes and additions in each game. That's why fans of the series love to brag about how they know their way around Kamurocho from the second they start a new Yakuza game. And this is no different for the Judgment series, which is a spin-off of the Yakuza series. It takes place in the same town, and even uses the same Dragon game engine that the latest Yakuza games use. It's impossible to not compare the Judgment games to the Yakuza games. I'm gonna be referring to the Yakuza games a lot, because each one of RGG's games follows an ever-improving formula, and Lost Judgment is the best formula for a Yakuza game yet. Just like the first game, Lost Judgment is a Yakuza game in a detective's game's uniform, but this time I got a lot more of the detective stuff that I wanted. Lost Judgment has you playing as exiled lawyer turned private eye Takayuki Yagami, and let's just say he's seen some sheet boy. In the previous game, it's explained that Yagami used to be one of the most de talented defense attorneys in the country, receiving an extremely rare not guilty verdict for one of his clients. Did you know that Japan has a 99.9% .9 conviction rate? How is that even possible? Anyway, this client turns out to be involved in murdering his own wife, sort of. So Yagami stops being a lawyer, and after one thing leads to another, for all we know, he decides to open his own private detective agency with his friend Kaito. Yagami and Kaito make more than a few enemies during the first game, as well as some friends who return for the second outing. 
All of this information may lead you to believe the first game is necessary to enjoy the second game, but it really isn't. Two people that Yagami makes friends with in the first game are Sugiyara and Tsukumo. Nuts. Tsukumo is a shut-in nerd who Yagami turns to for help with internet detective stuff, like tracking down where a certain crime is taking place based on what people are saying online. While Sugiyora is introduced as an extremely agile, masked parkour thief who's the leader of a Robin Hood-like gang that robs the rich and helps the poor. The reason I don't believe you need to play the first game is because while, yeah, these characters do return, they almost never talk about the first game or how it changed them. In Lost Judgment, Tsukumo and Sugiyora, who are not friends at all in the first game, join forces to create their own detective agency because they think Yagami is so damn cool. They even model their office to be exactly like his, which is convenient because Yagami uses this office as his headquarters throughout the game, and Tsukumo and Sugiyora act as underlings to Yagami and his adventures now. Tsukumo barely acts the same way he did in the first game, but I'm totally okay with this. This ragtag detective team is an unstoppable force when they work together, and being introduced to these characters as just being old friends is more than enough context for you to get by. However, if you're interested in a very well done video that goes over Judgment, I recommend your favorite son's Judgment Retrospective, which I'll link in the description. I suppose you could also just play the first Judgment yourself. It does have a fantastic narrative, but if you don't see yourself playing both games, in my opinion, Lost Judgment is much more worth your time. Lost Judgment takes place three years after Judgment, and all the madness of the first game has died down at this point. Yagami and Kaito are farting around when they receive a call from Sugiyora and Tsukumo, explaining how they've started their own detective agency and they need his help on a new case they're covering. After accepting the offer and heading over to their office called Yokohama 99, the job is explained to Yagami, and it's about the last thing I expected from an action-heavy, face-breaking, heat-action-abusing game developer like RGG Studios. The local high school has a bullying problem, so much so that a student died by suicide from it, and the principal has decided to hire private detectives to look into the matter. Which sounds nuts, right? Surely I'm not going to be beating the snot out of high school students, am I? Actually, yeah, yeah, you, you kind of are. The original game gave you two fighting styles to switch between at any time during combat, and Lost Judgment adds a third style called Snake Style. In the narrative, it's presented as a style Yagami can use when he wants to go easy on someone. For example, if an enemy is scared of you and has a purple aura around them, you can use a heat action where you scare them into backing down instead of stuffing their freaking teeth down their neck. This style sounds like it'd be perfect for dealing with unruly high school students. In fact, the game introduces snake style to us when a group of high school students attack us on the way to Yokohama 99. But using snake style after this first time it's introduced is entirely optional, and there's nothing stopping you from using your most brutal moves on high school students who probably aren't 18 yet, but that might be for the better from a gameplay perspective. Ludo narrative dissidents be damned. It sure as hell hasn't held this series back in the past. Yagami and the gang make their way to Sirio High to meet with the principal who is hiring them and go over further details. A few years before, back when that student passed away, one of his parents sued the school for their negligence being responsible for his suicide, but no evidence of bullying ever came out in court. So why is this principal hiring you guys now? Well, there's one detail I left out from the very beginning of the game that slowly becomes more and more relevant. When you first start the game, a cutscene is shown where a decomposing body is intentionally left out for the police to find, and this person was clearly murdered. This person turns out to be a student teacher named Hiro Mikoshiba, who rumors say was allowing the student who died from suicide to be bullied. Now, at the same time the body is discovered, 
A random man is shown in court who is being represented by the law firm Yagami used to work for as a lawyer, Genda Law, but now he does detective work for them. This man proudly states to the judge that today cops will find the body of Hiro Mikoshiba, the teacher responsible for my son's suicide. I'm glad he's dead and he deserved it. That random man turns out to be the father who sued the school and he's being charged with groping a woman on a train when he says all of this in court. Feeling like these two events are somehow connected, Gendala hires Yagami to get to the bottom of the murder of Hiro Mikoshiba. Lost Judgment's narrative slaps much harder than the first game with gray morals and murky characters that I want you to dig into yourself. Yagami turns out to be a Japanese Columbo in my opinion. He'll do anything to get to the truth and bring justice to the untouchable. But uh, I may have already said too much. The less you know going in, the better. Something else Lost Judgment nails is its gameplay loop. With every Yakuza game, there is a formula RGG Studios uses for every game with little tweaks and improvements. Actually, I have it right here. As you can see, it's pretty complicated, but let me do my best to explain it in layman's terms. Yakuza games revolve around a narrative that unfolds chapter by chapter. Typically, you'll be told to go somewhere in the city and fight a bunch of dudes. After you fight said dudes, you get a fancy cutscene. After an especially long fight or an especially long cutscene, you'll be told to go blow some time doing optional stuff in the city. After a set amount of time, you get a call and the story is ready to continue by the game telling you to go to some other location in the city as the Yakuza cycle repeats itself. You've got your typical mini games like classic Sega games at the arcade, batting at the batting center, and golfing at the golfing store. But the mini games you'll probably want to play most are the ones attached to a long optional storyline. Each game introduces more and more of these, but the really good mini games are the ones that usually don't come back to other Yakuza games. These range from the silly first person snowball fighting game in Yakuza 5 to the business simulator in Yakuza 7. While I love these mini games, previous games in the series have struggled to introduce these mini games without it seeming like a ridiculous pivot for your character to make at the time. For example, that snowball minigame from Yakuza 5 is introduced to us after we've escaped prison and are on the run. You're trying to keep a low profile when someone comes up to your character and offers to introduce you to the minigame. It's not that bad, but after 7 Yakuza games, I think they pivot into the optional content the best with Lost Judgment. During Yagami's investigation into the school, he needs to find a reason to be there for an extended period of time. The fact that the principal has hired private detectives is something you're supposed to keep a secret. So Yagami becomes an advisor for the Mystery Research Club, an after-school club for students that are fans of mysteries and want to solve some mysteries on their own. This not only helps Yagami continue his investigation, but gives you access to the other after-school clubs like the Robot Fighting League Club or the Skateboarding Club, all which are used to introduce the game's optional mini-games with stories attached. I like this approach to the Yakuza formula a lot because you can look into all this stuff at your own pace. It's totally possible to never even try the boxing minigame because you decided to only play the game's main narrative. Which would be crazy because the boxing minigame in Lost Judgment is almost as good as the motorcycle combat minigame in Lost Judgment. Okay, so I actually found myself quite lost in the optional content this game around. Doing this stuff not only rewards you with money and skill points to unlock new skills, but also equipment like armor and new skateboards. Something that is a big deal to me is that Lost Judgment made their open world traversal way more fun by adding skateboarding to the midst. You can grind and ollie over obstacles while you explore the town and its many secrets. And you don't have to get constantly bogged down by random encounters, like anytime you're 
tired of getting into fights, just hop on your skateboard. No big deal. But what else does this game do to make you feel like a detective? Instead of having Yagami beat everyone up like he did in the previous Judgment game, Lost Judgment adds detective tools and stealth gameplay to the mix. It's nothing too fancy, but sneaking around to choke homies out feels more detective-like to me. I don't know why. One of these detective tools also is a cute Shiba Inu named Rampo that you walk on a leash. Now that feels very detective-like to me. Oh, it's just like you said, Langdon. If we follow the clues, we could track him right down to where he raped and killed that girl. The lumberjacks. Ah, oh, the fingerprint on the locker. Of course. What's, what's that, Langdon? You found a footprint? Where? A footprint? You found a footprint? Where is it? Behind you! You can definitely track him down now. Speaking of feeling like a detective, the narrative does a good job of seeing if you're actually paying attention with dialogue prompts. But a lot of times, especially when big revelations are happening, you may choose the wrong dialogue option, but rather than the game just having one of the NPCs go, Uh, no, that was the wrong answer. Try again, dumbass. The characters will spend time explaining how it makes sense that you'd think that, but we've already tried that. Or maybe they'll say something along the lines of, that's true, but you're forgetting this. I loved this attention to detail with incorrect dialogue options. It makes the characters feel more natural and the story becomes more comprehensible, which gives players more chances to make sure they're ready for the crazy twists that RGG Studios games are known for. I don't want to give too much more away about Lost Judgment. Ryu Ga Gatoku Studios has a very interesting road ahead of it. One that has the series splitting into three directions in the next few years. A remake of the Samurai Yakuza game that never came over here from Japan, like a Dragon Ishin. A shorter Yakuza game focused on Kazuma Kiryu in the weird state he's left in after the last time we saw him, which is called <gasps> Like a Dragon Guide and the Man Who Erased His Name. And finally, Yakuza 8, which is now a turn-based JRPG. Probably the only one I have any actual interest in playing in these days, if I'm being honest. But what about the Judgment series? Time will only tell if the story of Yagami and his rinky-dink-dink -dink detective agency will continue. But as of right now, it's safe to say that RGG Studios is finally experimenting a lot more. I dream of them one day making a detective game with zero combat. You're just a weakling detective who actually can't hang in a fight at all. And uh, you just have to focus on like stealth gameplay and throwing smoke grenades or some stupid crap like that. And honestly, um, as, as they continue to uh, improve the stealth gameplay and wall climbing mechanics, I believe that RGG Studios will make my dream come true. Like a weakling, detective. When that inevitably does happen, you know I'll be there to tell you all about it. I love you, sir. Thanks for watching.